Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Hi everyone, I'm your host Ashley Hall and you're going to be seeing a lot more of me this segment. We've decided to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to partake in making a wood table today. I'm at Dwayne Shoup's house in Shevlin, local wood craftsman here in Shevlin, Minnesota, and we're going to be putting together a table today. I'm an amateur, but Dwayne has assured me that he can walk me through this process and he's more than willing to share. Um it feels really good to me to share what I've learned over 20, 25 years of doing woodworking um, with other people and help them out with their project. And um, maybe I can inspire them a little bit. We were talking earlier about the recession and how many people aren't buying the art and the custom-made furniture that they used to. But with our local art scene and the artisans that are willing to hold workshops themselves with the public, they're able to take advantage and still have that art in their home if they want. I think there's a, a little bit of a focus going on in the, a different mindset of the public in the country. The, um, things have gotten tight. People don't have as much money to spend on everything they want. So people are, I think, are getting into the mindset of being a little more self-sufficient. If you're willing to put a little sweat equity into what you want, well, then you can, you can actually Get something that you can afford mm -hmm. you know I mean you're gonna get it at a lot lo lower price point if you're uh, if you're willing to do part of the work and most people I think maybe have some hidden talents down there that they don't know that they have and um, people like me might want to bring that talent out we are here in my house which is kind of my showroom so Ashley can get some ideas from looking at some of the previous pieces I've made for myself and I got great ideas because the furniture that you have here is absolutely gorgeous. Well, thank you. Uh, so I think we've decided on a walnut top and some white oak legs. Okay, Dwayne, so what's the next step? Uh, the next step will be go out to my wood building and find some raw material to make this table out of. All right, let's go. So how much raw material do you keep on site? I have a rather large inventory of raw material that I keep on site here that I've accumulated probably over the course of 15, 20 years, and some of it's well aged. One of the things I do, I need, I need to pick your brain a little bit about, um, a little bit about style. Okay. Since I'm, you know, started in a lot of what I do is this rustic thing. Um, do you want something with a natural edge on it? I just want something or that says want... this is a Dwayne Shoup custom built piece of furniture. Original. Original. <laughs> okay, so this is my dry storage building. Okay, oh it's, my gosh, it's massive. And this is a little bit of my wood stash. Okay, um, so we're looking for a walnut. Okay, see I got some walnut boards up there that are not real huge, but we're not making a really big top anyway. Okay. And so this is this is one of the hardest parts about doing about doing a project like this. It's coming out here and here. You got this to deal with, and we're going to make this. And so decide, you know, picking out what we're going to use for raw material with this kind of a, somewhat of a design vision in your head. Okay, I'm. I think I found the piece of walnut that will work. There we go piece of walnut that will work for Ashley's tabletop was on the top of the stack. How unusual. It's usually at the bottom and I have to dig go through the whole pile to find it. A piece of Indiana walnut. Indiana? I'm an Ohio girl. Well, but Indiana <laughs> walnut I think will work. <laughs> it will. It's close. Perfect. Oh, it's gorgeous. Ready? Let's head back to the shop and start making a table. 
Okay, so now the process is just figuring out which grains are actually going to be exposed on the table. And we have the walnut, and then we have white oak in white this oak. one? Okay. We have a piece of white oak here that we're going to make our leg structure out of. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the measurements. Initially, we talked about 15 by 20. But the piece of walnut we've picked out is a little over 11 inches. So if it's okay with Ashley, if she's not stuck on 15 inches wide, we can make it a little bit bigger. All right, let's make it a we little can, bit We bigger. can kind of go with the flow of what our piece of wood's given us. Absolutely. And we won't waste very much of it. Okay, since we're going to leave our natural edge on there, this is where Ashley could start getting a little experience in... Uh, building our own table. All right, let's do it. Because one of the it. things we do, one of the things I do with the natural edge is I usually clean it up a little bit. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, what I sand wood with. It's a, just an orbital sander. So, Ashley's a beginner, but this is a good thing. This is a good thing that anybody can kind of get their head around and get their hands on and it's uh, not too difficult to operate. Hand there, there. Okay. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, see where I told you to, from, from the center out. I might not, I might not. It's got a trigger on it, so sometimes you Oh, okay. Trigger, you can... Should I stand over here or is it funky the way I'm standing? All right, now we're cooking. All right, so I'm taking them. So we're just we're just trying stuff. to get a kind of a consistent look. Okay. If it was me, I'd say that's good. Good. We dressed up the edge. I'm looking at the wood. It's got a little bit of curve to it. If you want to look down the plane of it. Okay. Oh, so you see how it's got a little bit like mm -hmm. that, a little curve going to it? Yes. So generally when I'm making a table, I would like to keep that curve on the outside. Okay. So this will be our finished edge that we want to keep. And we sanded it. All right. This one piece is going to make a wider table, so we need to split it in two. How do we do that? So you want to pull the trigger on that monster? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to my, my miter saw. Ashley, you're gonna make this cut. We're gonna cut our piece of walnut into two pieces. But before we do that, I think we're uh, gonna gear up with a little safety equipment. I'm okay. I'm gonna give you a pair of safety glasses. Okay. Um, some hearing protection. And I'm gonna do the same. Now, when you make this cut, it's up, it's up tight against the fence. That's where we want it. You wanna make sure you got the blade up to full speed before you start to cut. Give her a try. Okay. Don't so, be afraid of it. And there's just this trigger back here. And I always probably got my hand on it over here, but okay. you, of course you don't want to have your hand too close. Sure. And, um, All right, so full speed on the blade, yep. and then just slightly Pull down. The trigger and... Okay. So we have our two pieces All right. that we're going to make our tabletop out of. The next thing I need to do is I need to take some material off the inside pieces so I get a, a nice fit to fit them together. And, and to do that, I'm going to use the bandsaw. I am going to get myself a straight edge to follow marked onto the piece of wood. Okay. Okay, so the point of the bandsaw is just to get it as straight as possible, but I'm going to go ahead and watch you demo for me. Okay, and then I'll, I'll cut the, I'll second cut the first piece. one so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Sure. And then follow up on what I do. All right. Here's how you turn it on. This is the off button. When you want to, when you want to shut it off, okay. just hit that button. And then like that. All right. What I'm going to do is kind of stand off to the side of it. You're a natural. I've had a lot of practice. <laughs>
This is my first time on a bandsaw, and you're seeing it right here on Common Ground. All right, so we turn this to the left so that the button pops out. Yep. Okay. And then that And then one's we're going to turn this one straight up. Yes, ma'am. Or down. There you go. All right. Okay. Not, not too bad. Not, bad. not too not bad. Not bad for your first cut. Just shave a little off the end there. But not bad. You did a pretty good job following that. All line. right. Okay, the next thing we want to do is go to the joiner and we're going to clean up our cut. Okay. Okay, let's, let's go back to the bench and see how we did. Okay. We might have to do a little, a little minor adjusting yet. Okay. And then, if it's not flat, then I can kind of look and see which corner is, is, is high, this corner and that corner. It would be great if wood grew square and straight and sure. flat and dried that way. It would be wonderful, but it never happens. <laughs> so if I'm sitting here like this and I see that I need to take a little off this corner and a little off this corner, that's why it's good. Put a little X on there. And just by shaving it with the planer, that's just going to give you that little bit that you need to get rid yeah, of the wobble. I, I want to, I want to get rid of that wobble out of there. So it's this corner and this corner. Okay. So then, how do you know where to start? I mean, do you start right in the middle or mm, just that's trial experience. and error? That's right. the kind of experience thing where I, I don't know. It just gut feel. Mm-hmm. Really is just a little bit. Look at that. We're on. Pretty close. Pretty close. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it out to the wood planer and we're going to surface it. Okay. So we're going to clean this edge up and we're going to get it all the same thickness. Okay. The first thing about the wood planer is I need to uh, need to set the depth. And it's pretty simple. It just feeds the board through on its own. Okay. You don't have to really do much. tabletop roughed out. The next thing we're going to do is glue our two tabletop boards together. Probably whenever I'm gluing something together, the first thing I want to do is put a little clamp pressure on it. If I don't have this milled right, it might, it might cup up or something. And I can also use my straight edge. Looks pretty good. I'm going to get some glue. High-tech uh, mustard bottle. Okay. Just squeeze out a nice little bead on there. There you go. Probably a little more. Perfect. You look like you've done that before. Then you get your finger right in there and spread it around okay. all over everything. Yeah, I'll just go like this, kind of like. Yeah, there you go. Almost more fun than Play-Doh. <laughs> okay. Then you want to give it a little clamp pressure, but you don't have to squeeze it real hard. 
and see how we got a little a squeeze out there? Sure. That's what we're looking for, because that way we know we got glue on everything. Okay. And we'll clean that up later after that dries. So. We're going to cut legs out of this piece of white oak I have over here leaning up against the bench. So the next step is going to be to whittle this down a little bit. All right. I think it's a little bit big for a leg right now. Okay. You know what I'll have you do? Yeah. I'm going to grab that end and we'll set it right on that corner of that table there. Okay. Safety first. Right. <laughs> right. We want to protect ourselves from flying splinters. And I think we'll kind of mock up a little pattern out of a piece of scrap so we kind of get a visual and get an idea what it's going to look like. Perfect. Uh, we can go back to our table and get another look at it. I like it a lot. All right. Nothing like a satisfied customer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's our pattern piece, and here's a piece I've milled out for the leg stock, and I'm setting that on there, and that is going to work with a little to spare. I'm taking what the wood gives me. I have to work with what it's what I've got. So I milled it down some, and if we looked at that on our table, to me, just visualizing our tabletop. You know, the size and dimension of it, that's pretty beefy leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since we have the stock to do it, we could taper it both ways. Okay, so it would be tapered like that, mm -hmm. and also be tapered like this. Love it. Um, Draw knife. Probably not many woodworkers even have one of these in their shop. Mm -hmm. Probably a, a really old, old way of doing things. And, and the way to use it mm -hmm. is a bit of an angle. Mm -hmm. So it always, it always, it works better if you work it as a little angle. Okay. Give her a try. Now you're going to find sometimes the way the grain runs and mm -hmm. things that it's going to want to dig into the grain. Mm -hmm. Then you need to go the other direction. Okay. Kind of like that. Then you get this kind of freehand cut that we hit with the sander. It just gives it that little bit of imperfection to know that it's handmade, handcrafted. The next phase is going to be to decide my apron. How, how deep do I want my apron? I've, I've got a piece of wood here that I can mill some apron material out of. Okay, I'm cutting my uh, apron stock down to two and a half from about three. And we're gonna see what that looks like. That's two and a half. I like it. You know, I can cut it down more. But the the wider this is, the more, the more stability, the more support mm -hmm. you're going to have for your leg stock. And these are mighty good looking legs, <laughs> so we'll give them some support that they need. We still got to get all our legs to be straight, same distance apart. We're going to cut a tendon on here that's going to fit into a mortise in the leg. A lot of people that I talk to at shows and stuff, they don't even know what a mortise and tendon joint is. Most furniture today is glued and screwed together and it's just, they don't take the time to do the mortise and tenon joint. 
Okay, here's my piece for the apron. I'm marking my sides that are gonna get mortised. We'll have a mortise that comes from this line down to the end. Now, we've moved to the hollow chisel mortiser to make our mortise. And what this is, is basically a big drill press. It has a square bit, which is a chisel, and it has a drill bit that runs inside that. And the chisel actually shapes the inside of the hole and the bit pulls out the wood. The machine works better if you don't drill each hole right next to each other. You wanna drill a hole here, you wanna skip a little space. Same thing as you work your way down the line. Then you come back after you've worked your way down the line and take out those center parts. There I roughed out the mortise. And we'll clean it up a little yes, bit with a hand chisel. Such a beautiful I think, part. Ashley, I think you need to try this out. You think so? I think you do. I want to get me a couple pencil marks on there just as a little bit of a guide. We're going to use little sh one of shop made jigs for making tendons. The trick to making this tendon is to get the right width. It's going to be snug into the mortise. Clamp it in, nice and snug. This side runs up against the fence, and that's how uh, that's how I will get my adjustment. And what I'm going to do is kind of get an eyeball on that pencil mark, and I'll cut it a little. What woodworkers would say, proud first, a little oversized. By turning it around, it automatically centers it on the, on the stock. Good. Yeah, I made two slots. It looks close. I need to cut the cheeks off in order to be able to actually test it out into the mortise. And there's different ways I can do that. I can set up a milling operation on a table saw, or I could do it by hand. Something Ashley could practice. This is a Japanese style saw. It cuts on the pull stroke. You can cut a thinner curve because the blade is not under tension because you're pulling it instead. Remember, cuts on the pull stroke. Okay. For so many people, that's really difficult to get the feel for that. There you go. Remember, pull stroke. You're cutting on a pull stroke. Let up on the front stroke. There you go. Ooh. <laughs> get your finger out of there. to push on it too hard. Okay. Doesn't that cut okay. much easier? Okay, now after all our hard work, our milling operations, we get to assemble it and see what it looks like. All right. Well, I am just tickled pink. Look at this. But there's their basic table that we put together. It just looks wonderful. You can tell it put a smile on her face. We it must did. have did something right. <laughs> Hard work has paid off. I just love it. But now you kind of get a little understanding of what goes into Absolutely. making something like that. Absolutely. It was a, a bit of work, isn't it? Oh, and some effort. More than a bit. Yeah, doesn't it feel good when you make it something? It does. 
That's just a really just a good sense feeling. Of accomplishment, absolutely. That's always the reward of when you finish a project. Of course, it's not quite finished yet. Next, we'll um, we got to tweak a few things here. Make sure our, to get our table to fit together just perfect. The mortises there need to be adjusted just a bit. Um, then we can glue it together, sanding, finish sanding and finishing, and it'll be done. It's our rustic modern look. Mm -hmm. Kind of refined, but we're kind of running with a hand draw knifed edge and a natural edge on the edge of the tabletop. I, th I think it has a bit of an elegant look, it pretty does. refined. But we've also got a little hand draw knifed edge on here that I mean, actually. Look how pretty on. this grain is here. It's just beautiful. Just the natural wood itself is gorgeous. We've left the natural edge of the tree on this side. So we got a little of that Mother Nature thing going on. Rustic modern. I like it. I do too. Good. It's going to look so good in the perfect spot that I have for it. If you have a segment idea for common ground pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3022. To view this episode or any common ground segment, visit us at lptv.org backslash common ground. For individual segments or copies of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.